Okay, thank you for inviting me to this seminar. So my name is Nicolo Camarlinghi and I'm working as head of research in PlySite. And in this presentation, I will try to describe our experience with neuromorphic sensors in the context of security and surveillance, specifically for automatic target det detection. Before getting into the actual topic of the presentation, I will just pen this slide to describe FlySight. So who we are. So FlySight is a small medium enterprise located in Italy, specifically in Livorno, and it's a software house operating in defense and security domain. What we do for a living is that we do software to support the decision. And we are strong in remote sensing, data analytics, artificial intelligence, and augmented reality. And what, what we could offer to our clients is our flagship product, which is called OpenSight Mission Console, which is essentially a cross-platform solution to perform data fusion, which will feature an engine for GIS, augmented reality, artificial intelligence. And of course, if it's needed, this solution can be customized or we can also customize and produce solution from scratch for clients that needs that. And what we are looking for is clients, of course, but also we are very interested in scientific and industrial partnership. So if you feel that we can be helpful to you, please feel free to write me an email and I will try to address that. Getting to the topic of this discussion. So the aim of this study was to have the possibility to evaluate having cameras, cameras in comparison with uh, regular cameras in this security and defense domain. And especially we want to evaluate their potential in challenging condition. And uh, also we want to just understand how mature is artificial intelligence in this context, specifically for target recognition. So in order to do this, we set up a workbench to measure relative advantages of these two modalities. And specifically, we built uh, um, an equipment that is acquiring visible and event at the same time. And we perform the dedicated data collection in order to gather the images and the data to be able to run this um, comparison. So this is a picture of the setup I was discussing before. Uh, as you see here, is pretty research right now, but still it, it makes the job. So it consists of two cameras uh, mounted on a fixed rig. The visible camera is a, a stereo camera from Stereo Labs. It's called Z2i. In this work, is actually not used as a stereo camera, but as a regular camera. And Evan camera is a a vision cam EV that was bought from Imago Technologies. So this setup was mounted on a fixed rig and the fixed rig was mounted on a tripod. We also developed a software based on MetaVision SDK and ZSDK to allow to acquire at the same time data. And as these two cameras, they have different fob, specifically the visible camera has a larger field of view we develop a procedure in order to crop the visible field of view to the one of the event camera using a flashlight, which is visible both in the event domain to, due to the fact that there is modulation of the light and also uh, is visible, of course, in the, in the uh, visible domain. And uh, in terms of the event camera, we also set up the biases of the camera manually, which is kind of the weak point probably of all this approach, as I will be able probably to uh, explain to you later. And so we moved this setup to a rural area and we used the uh, person, car and drones as targets. In this short talk, I'll be able just to show some qualitative results for drones and some quantitative results for person. Okay, so, the aim of this talk is to evaluate automatic target detection in both domains. So in order to do so, we mm, decided to use probably the most common um, technology for this, which is named YOLO. 
and specifically for the um, visible domain, we use uh, YOLO v6 that was trained on the COCO dataset, which is a general purpose dataset that is, was built by Microsoft and includes 81 classes. Among them, there are pedestrian and cars and the other, the other classes, the other prediction were ignored for this study. Um, in the event domain, we use what is the uh, correspondent of YOLO v6, which was trained on Gen 1 dataset, and uh, it's which is a dataset for uh, automotive, and it's basically feature two classes, pedestrian and cars. Despite the fact that these two algorithms have a similar name, they behave in a quite different way. For example, in the visible domain, as we all know, what we do is that we collect frames and then we perform the inference for each frame individually. And uh, so the maximal inference rate that you could achieve in this situation is basically driven by the frame rate of the video you are, um, uh, you are acquiring. In the event domain, in the, on the other side, the situation is completely different. So you have no concept of frame, as we know, and uh, we have we can tune the the, the instant where we want to uh, perform the inference, and we also can select another parameters which tells us how many events we want to use for the inference. Um, once we have these events, these are uh, transferred in a, a convenient representation for the algorithm, and then the, the inference can be performed. For this specific study, we use an inference rate at 60 hertz, and uh, we use number of events of 5,000. And for the inference rate, this is twice as much as the one for the visible, that is achievable with the visible camera. Before getting a little bit to the results, just to explain to you how we uh, collect the data and we uh, stratify them and which kind of KPI we looked for. So as I told you before, we collected data of person In we stratify this collection in three uh, different categories. So we have person in low light condition scenarios or at night person in complex background scenarios and person in an obstructed scenarios, which means normal uh, person without any uh, form of visual impairment. And uh, in order to measure the possible advantage of this modality, we selected these two KPIs, which, is, which are the time to detect the target. So the, the number of seconds basically that takes for the algorithm to perform the first detection of the target and the false positive rate, which is accounts for the number of false alarm raised by the algorithm. And for all these KPIs, less is better. This is just a few results that show the potential of the event uh, uh, domain uh, automatic target detection. So as you see in here, there is the first KPI here so on the left, the average time to detect the target. If you go, for example, in a scene with no particular environment, the both the two modalities, they are more or less equivalent in terms of time to detection. But when you go, for example, in a low illumination um, scenarios or in scenarios with complex background, then the situation is completely different. And the advantage specifically for this last uh, situation is pretty evident. And uh, on the other side, if you look at false positive rate, the situation is probably not optimal because in the visible domain, what you get is basically no uh, false positive at all or very few. Whereas in some situation in the event domain, you will get some number of false positive even in the simpler cases. But this can be due probably to the fact that the optimization of the parameters was not carried out very systematically in our case. And also the fact that in the event domain, you will have less contextual uh, information in order to discriminate false positive and, and true positive. But anyway, this could also an effect of the model we are using to do the, the prediction. I want just to show you the advantage of uh, uh, using this modality 
<clears throat> with a simple video. And uh, so as you can see here, you will see a, a pedestrian that is standing in, in this vanguard. And uh, if I click play on this video, you will see here that even though there is a lot of noise in the image, the pedestrian silhouette is pretty visible. And also the algorithm is capable of detecting it without any problem. Whereas in the visible part, it's not that case. It will detect the, the pedestrian, but just a few times. And this is due mainly to the, 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 the cluttered background and also to the uh, present of obstruction. One other qualitative uh, results that we want, I want to show to you is about the, the drone. Uh, as mentioned by Eric and others, drone detection with the event camera is a really hot topic. And in this case, we want to just to show you that uh, even though in the visible domain, the drone is pretty hard to uh, detect due to the cluttered background, you can still see it in the event domain, even if it's hovering. So the, the drone is staying still, but however, the propellers, they are moving, of course, and with the proper settings of biases, you could detect the propellers. So it is, becomes pretty uh, visible anyway. And uh, in the picture below, you would see the more or less the same situation, but with the drone moving over a, a complex background. And as you can see here, even though you cannot distinguish from this distance the propellers, the silhouette of the drone is pretty easy to, 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 to be detected. So this would lead to my conclusion. And so we have seen potential advantages of the event-based vision, in particular in terms of the time to detect a target in complex scenarios. And of course, we have seen that artificial intelligence at this stage in this event domain is not that mature as it is in, for the visible domain, but still, it works, uh, I would say, nicely. So this is pretty promising. However, if we want to just uh, go uh, below this, these this problems, so uh, we need to address a number of issues. And I just noted here a few of them. First of all, we will need to find a way to adjust camera parameters in some automatic way. I think that this is pretty hard because the, 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 the right parameter to be used is pretty contextual. So it needs to, to be tailored for a specific task as for a specific scene. And also if we want, we want to improve uh, automatic target detection and in general artificial intelligence, we need more data. And uh, one solution could be to explore data simulation for that. So this would be my uh, last slide.